Coming up on We Talk News Tonight, a snag in the House Committee looking to advance cannabis research at the VA for veterans. Snoop Dogg puts his money where his passion is by helping out a European cannabis startup. The NBA will once again pass on random drug testing for weed this season, a continuation of a policy from last year's bubble season. And California opens its doors to the international CBD market. Why? The Golden State wants to take advantage of a $3.2 trillion industry. Of course they do, on We Talk News, next. Pro Cannabis Media Programming and PCM TV is supported by Revolutionary Clinics, Massachusetts' number one medical dispensary where the patient comes first, and by Salient Systems for Video Surveillance. You've got regulations, Salient has solutions for your security needs. And by Accounting Buds, your number one CPA specialist for the cannabis industry. And by Artery Pay, easy, cheap, fun, and legal just like cannabis should be. Hi everyone, I'm Jimmy Young from Pro Cannabis Media and this is We Talk News. So, are you going to the biggest cannabis convention in the world next week in Las Vegas? Yes, it's the 10th annual MJ BizCon and we'll be there reporting all week our weekly Green Rush Live show on the business of cannabis. Well, that will be originating from the Strip next Friday live. Meanwhile, Nick Richards is an attorney for Green Spoon Martyr, one of the nation's law firms with a cannabis practice that's based in Colorado. Nick will be taking part on a panel at MJ BizCon talking about the IRS and cannabis companies. Now, most people in the cannabis industry know all about Section 280E that doesn't allow companies to take normal business expenses when doing their taxes. But Nick knows about another clause that he thinks the industry should go after. This cannabis is weird in every single way and tax is not different. And so even though those code sections might say one thing, they could be completely wrong in their way they are now affecting um, cannabis companies. So now let's talk about Section 471C, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, I'm so glad we're talking today because this is really, really, really important stuff. This should be the single most important thing for anyone in the cannabis industry and anyone who's an advocate for the cannabis industry or, in fact, for social justice in the cannabis industry. Because guess what? Section 280E is a creature of the war on drugs. It is a which and we all know that the war on drugs was a war on minorities. And Section 280E is the number one tool that our federal government has in that war. As a matter of fact, it was it was created during the war on drugs. And then when California first um, legalized marijuana, it was identified as the best tool for the federal government Clinton administration at the time to fight legalization. Right. And it is still the tool that the federal government is using to fight legalization. Let's not let's not forget that. That panel on the IRS and cannabis will be on Thursday in Las Vegas at MJ BizCon. We'll have a full preview of that big show from here in our home state of Massachusetts, but we'll be looking to preview MJ BizCon in Las Vegas on Friday when the CEO of MJ Biz Daily, Chris Walsh, joins us live at 4 p.m. Eastern time on Green Rush Live. We also have the CEO of Audacious Brands, Terry Booth, who was the founder of Aurora, joining us at 5.30. So don't miss that live or on demand on our PCM TV network. So just when you thought there would be progress on VA hospitals becoming more accessible for veterans seeking cannabis, well, a recent House committee hearing ended with some controversy. Here's Phil Adams with the DC Report. Phil? Administration would embrace even modest cannabis reforms were at least partially dashed this week. At a hearing before the House Veterans Affairs Health Subcommittee, David Carroll, an official at the Department of Veterans Affairs, told lawmakers his department continues to oppose the VA Cannabis Research Act. The measure would require the VA to conduct clinical trials into the therapeutic potential of cannabis for military veterans. In his testimony before the subcommittee, Carroll said the legislation is, quote, not consistent with VA's practice of ensuring scientific merit as the basis for a randomized clinical trial. The bill got the thumbs down from the administration despite support from multiple veteran service organizations, including veterans of foreign wars, disabled American veterans, 
and the American Legion. Long waits and high prices seem to be the order of the day for medical marijuana patients in Virginia, though it is now legal in the Commonwealth to possess and grow cannabis for personal use. Virginia's medical marijuana program is still the only legal avenue for purchasing cannabis. Patients who want to shop at a Virginia dispensary must first get a doctor's recommendation, then apply to the Virginia Board of Pharmacy for a medical marijuana card, a process that many complain can take months. After a full year of legal medical marijuana sales in Virginia, fewer than 33,000 patient cards have been issued. Advocates, including Jen Padini, executive director of Virginia Normal, believe the small number of patients, combined with the decision to grant operating licenses to only five regional suppliers, have contributed to higher cannabis prices, which can often be twice that of comparable, pro comparable products sold in Maryland and D.C. Maryland lawmakers meeting to craft a legalization measure in their state are getting advice from a top federal drug official. Susan Weiss of the National Institute on Drug Abuse appeared at a meeting of the Maryland House Legalization Work Group to discuss recent trends and offer words of caution. Among her recommendations, Weiss advised keeping medical and recreational sales separate while paying close attention to which products people are using and how they use them. Weiss also recommended that lawmakers lean on the advice of health professionals rather than on industry stakeholders in developing a regulated cannabis market in Maryland. That's the Weed Talk News DC report for this week. I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast. Now, I think we all know that California remains the biggest state in the union for the cannabis market, for both legal and, of course, the illegal market. Well, now it looks like that state will be exporting CBD all over the world. Governor Gavin Newsom signed that into law this week. And Christopher Smith from the American Cannabis Report has that story and more in his California report for We Talk News this week. Chris? I'm Christopher Smith, publisher of the American Cannabis Report bringing you the roundup from the great cannabis state of California for Weed Talk News. From the Benefits of Cannabis Desk and the Santa Cruz Lookout, voters in Santa Cruz will decide next month the fate of Measure A, which would nearly double the amount of money flowing from the Santa Cruz Cannabis Business Tax to childhood development programs in the town. The increase comes amid an extended period of hardship for families brought on by the pandemic. And from our Hollywood desk and Entertainment Weekly, 30 years ago, while filming their movie Twins, Danny DeVito would often make a big Italian lunch for his co-star, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and afterward they'd have cigars and relax before the afternoon's filming. One day, DeVito added some cannabis to his movie brother's big cigar, and the Terminator got blasted. Hilarity ensued, and with it, the need for some Austrian revenge. Fast forward to filming the sequel, Triplets, and Arnold tried to return the favor with a well-packed Cuban look-alike. But unfortunately, DeVito still has the nose of a bloodhound, Schwarzenegger reports, and he sniffed out the special ingredient right away. Better luck next time, big guy. And finally, from the file called Men's Rights or Men's Wrongs and the San Luis Obispo Tribune, men's rights activist, activist sues another San Luis Obispo County business over ladies' night promotion. Some guys are destined never to get laid. Take Steve Fry, a former member of the National Coalition for Men. He's filed a class action lawsuit against Megan's Organic Market at San Luis Obispo Dispensary over its ladies' night promotion, which advertises, on average, women make 84 cents for every dollar their male counterparts make, so every Monday from 6 p.m. to close, we're offering women 16% off their purchase. To be fair to men, Megan's added, if you're a man and you reap the benefits of pay inequality and also want to redeem this discount, be our guest. Mr. Fry is seeking statutory damages of $4,000 for each and every offense and an order requiring that management and employees undergo diversity and inclusiveness training. Now, I'm no judge, 
but someone might want to look at Megan's website and realize it's open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day or 77 hours a week. Ladies' night is only two hours on Monday, so there's 75 opera hours of operation each week where Steve could go to Megan's and be treated like a woman, since that seems to be what he wants. It also been reported that in the state of California, Steve Fry has fired, filed 40 gender discrimination lawsuits. And I'm Christopher Smith from the American Cannabis Report, beaming in from Cannabis Heaven, California, for Weed Talk News. Last year, the NBA, the National Basketball Association, managed to run a postseason tournament in a bubble at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Now, during that time, the league postponed their random drug testing for cannabis for its players. Well, now those players won't have to worry about that again, since the league announced this week that policy will be continued for this entire season. Well, that's certainly good news for many players, although the league does have some problems with non-vaccinated players against COVID, like Kyrie Irving, who will not be able to play for the Nets in Brooklyn this year unless he gets his shot. Funny, since Kyrie is a master at creating his own shot, just not getting them. Anyway, I'm certainly glad he doesn't play for the Celtics anymore. Now, let's go to Vermont to hear from Jessie Lynn Dolan, who's been busy harvesting her crop for the year. Here's the Vermont Report with Jessie Lynn. Thanks, Jimmy. I'm Jessie Lynn Dolan from Nurse Grown Organics and Vermont Cannabis Nurses, and this is the Weed Talk News Vermont Report. Hot and Hetty has just launched their dinner and a movie event series with old school classics being played on an outside large screen with infused snacks for your enjoyment. First showing is on October 23rd, starting it off right with an all time favorite Ghostbusters. Check out Hot and Hetty on Instagram for more information. On October 22nd, the University of Vermont Extension Northwest Crops and Soil Program is holding their annual fall field day at Borderview Farm in Alberg. Come tour the fields and learn about the latest research in grains, cover crops, soil health, and forages. Field day is free, but you need to register by October 20th at 2021fallfieldday.eventbrite.com. The Marijuana for Symptom Relief Oversight Committee voted on their recommendations for the board makeup moving forward and have submitted them to the Cannabis Control Board. These recommendations will serve as a strong base for the medicinal cannabis program, patient support, and representation moving forward. That's the Vermont Report for Weed Talk News. I'm Vermont's cannabis nurse, Jessie Lynn Dolan. Nevada will play host to next week's 10th annual MJ BizCon trade show and the conference, of course, that goes along with it. But the news from Nevada this week comes from the $1 billion in taxable sales of cannabis over the past 12 months in that state. $159 million will now be used for the distributive school account thanks to the sales of cannabis over the past year. That's an increase of 46% over the previous fiscal year. Hope that news item just reaches some of those states out there that continue to be on the fence about legalizing cannabis in your state. Do you hear that, South Dakota? Come on, get on top of things, will you? Hey, thanks, Jimmy. This is Brandon Jones with Distribution Maven with your Missouri Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. My first story today comes off of the story I did last week versus Tygo versus DHSS. The federal court judge announced today after only seven minutes sitting on trial that the no longer does Missouri have to have a residency requirement to open and operate a license for medical marijuana in the state of Missouri. This is a big change. We've seen that, you know, this is coming, going around the states where things have kind of relaxed and left either after a time period or no uh, residency requirement. So this is kind of a trendsetter that other states I think are going to use in the future to, to, you know, resonate and say that this is passed in Missouri. And so I don't think this requirement is going to be re required throughout the rest of the United States. My second story comes out of Mo Greenway. The DHSS releases manufactured marijuana products from hold. So the Missouri Department of Health Senior Services Marijuana Regulation Requirement announced at, at the end of administrative hold for metric for both products involved in the email that was sent out last, last afternoon. The email explained that manufactured marijuana products and product already in the manufacturing process will be removed from administrative hold within 24 hours with one exception. Flower and flower products, including pre-rolls that were placed on hold previously, will remain on hold and metric as the investigation continues. 
So if you know anything about my history, you think humidity is definitely something that should have an issue here. It might have some mold with some products. So they're trying to get down to it to make sure that the, uh, all of the residents here in Missouri aren't getting anything that's contained products. So thanks again. This is Brandon Jones with Distribution Maven for Weed Talk News with your Canis Report from Missouri. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great weekend. The state of Florida has a pretty vibrant medical cannabis market with over 600,000 patients enrolled. But unfortunately, that state has not distributed their medical dispensary licenses according to the laws that were put in place to help social equity applicants. Did you know there are 22 treatment centers in that state and only one is minority owned? Farmers, has also, farmers there have also been shut out because of their ethnicity. There have been dozens of lawsuits and the regulatory board there is in no hurry to do anything about that. Even in Oklahoma, where everybody gets a medical license, there are issues about equality and fairness. Dion Osborne covers that beat for the Black Wall Street Times, and this is his report on what's going on in Oklahoma. Dion. My name is Dion Osborne from the Black Wall Street Times, here with the Oklahoma Report for Weed Talk News. Now, here in the state of Oklahoma, there's been two petitions filed recently, one to alter the state's current medical program and one to legalize recreational marijuana for those 21 and up. In the case of state question 817, Oklahoma Marijuana Regulation and Right to Use Act, it would legalize it for those 21 and up, place a 15% tax on purchases, allow for up to eight ounces of purchases, and 12 homegrown plants. It will seek for the expungement of records of cannabis-related convictions and ban discrimination on the basis of you know, housing, employment, public services, just because someone has THC in their system or on their hair or on their body. Now, state question 818, Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Enforcement and Anti-Corruption Act would really take authority out from the current program the OMMA, and give it its own freestanding agency, the Oklahoma State Cannabis Commission. Now, the reason for this is because really there's been a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of late to the game regulations that have uh, taken, uh, that have really caught business owners off guard. There's been a lot of lawsuits against the industry, um, uh, against the program. And so the Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Authority currently is underneath the Oklahoma Healthcare Authority. And so that has caused a lot of these problems, a lot of these delays um, in setting standards across the industry. And so petitioners are hoping, you know, that, that this change would really benefit and, and solve a lot of the problems happening in the industry right now. Um, and so in, the, in both cases, they'll need at least 178,000 signatures uh, in order for their petitions to pass. So we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm Elena Pinto for Weed Talk News. Massachusetts U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren teamed up with New Jersey Senator Cory Booker this week by writing a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland to deschedule cannabis. According to the Controlled Substances Act, the AG has the power to do just that. This is another tactic by cannabis advocates in order to get cannabis reform at the federal level. That letter reminded Garland that during his presidential campaign, Joe Biden said that nobody should be in jail from smoking marijuana. Both Booker and Warren have asked Garland to respond to their review of cannabis's classification by October 20th. For the rest of the Massachusetts Cannabis News, here's Ron Marshallsey. I'm Ron Marshallsey with the Massachusetts Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. The town of Lee, Massachusetts decided not to charge an impact fee to a cannabis store which has been cited by Haverhill Cannabis retailer Stem showing there are no impacts from hosting such businesses. Owner and CEO of Stem, Caroline Pinot, said the recent experience by the town of Lee and earlier by the city of Northampton, which did the same thing, shows recreational cannabis stores have thus far posed no additional or unusual expenses to communities that host them. Pinot is calling on the Haverhill City Council to review the administration's calculation of $1.3 million in extra costs associated with all cannabis shops in Haverhill. Pinot was quoted as saying, The $1.3 million cost report produced by Haverhill looked ridiculous when it came out, and it looks even more ridiculous now with the town of Lee and Northampton both admitting there have been no costs. I think the city council should question every aspect of this report and demand that the mayor produce actual evidence of real costs. STEM filed suit against Haverhill in April, and in September, an independent consulting firm found that more than $866,000 of extra expenses were allocated to the Haverhill Police Department and $288,000 to Haverhill Public Schools. 
City officials plan to meet again this fall with its three operating cannabis retailers to review cost analyses. Steven Van Zant, a founding member of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band, is launching a line of cannabis pre-rolls at Canna Provisions in Massachusetts. Little Steven's underground apothecary pre-rolls will be exclusively available at Canna Provisions, and they are made with Western Massachusetts-grown Smash Hits Cannabis. Van Zant said in a statement, We need to help spread cannabis education, destigmatization, and stop unjust criminalization for a plant that not only does a lot of good, but has proven during COVID to be essential to people's well-being and quality of life. His pre-rolls contain high CBD, low THC craft cannabis, which Canna Provisions said will give less of a stoned high and more of a full body balancing effect with uplifting pep. That's this week's Massachusetts Cannabis Report. For We Talk News, I'm Ron Marshallsey. Everyone knows Snoop Dogg is a huge cannabis supporter, but he's now putting his money where his passion is. Snoop Dogg is investing in a Portuguese medical cannabis company to the tune of $18.7 million. The company, AceCan, is the first licensee in that country. One more note of international news. Canopy Growth from Canada is acquiring Wana Brands, the number one edible brand in North America. And lastly, it's harvest season. So home growers and commercial growers, you're bringing in your crops for the season, right? So here's a few suggestions of what to do with any extra weed. Well, you could gift it. Maybe you can make some can of butter or just roll a big fatty, have a party, smoke a joint. I'm Elena Pinto for this week's Weed Talk News. And remember what PCM founder Jimmy Young always says, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. PCM TV is supported by Salient Systems, a world leader in video management security, and by Revolutionary Clinics, a medical dispensary where the patient comes first, and by Accounting Buds, your number one CPA specialist for the cannabis industry. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area. Now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. Difference is building a solution for that individual not just a custom, here's a box, here's a video, here's how you make your VMS. We custom design and custom build every situation for exactly what the customer needs. And we keep the cost low. We have multiple tiers, you know, as far as what you're looking at on the cost side of things. If you want a one time, you know, where you just pay one initial cost, we have that. If you want to maintain your system and have the highest protection and highest capabilities and highest upgrades at all times, we have different plans for you. But we scale it so it's scalable and affordable 100%. Cannabis Media Programming is available live and on demand on our Facebook page at Pro Canna Media, on Instagram at Pro Cannabis Media, on LinkedIn also at Pro Cannabis Media, on YouTube and YouTube Live on Pro Cannabis Media, Twitter at Pro Canna Media, and on twitch.tv backslash Pro Cannabis Media. So like, share, and subscribe to all of our content, newsletters, and shows live or on demand. We are Pro Cannabis Media.